welcome back to the Lorna Wiston Schools podcast, the place where we connect with parents from around the globe to share our experiences on a variety of topics. We are a leading school and have been based in Singapore for over 40 years. We specialize in developing a lifelong love for learning, and our focus is on working with our parents to develop their children's 21st century skills, transforming them into the talented critical thinkers of tomorrow. I am your host, Mr. Amos, a speech and drama teacher. And with me today is Miss Reshmi. Hello, oh. Mr. Amos. Hello, also a speech and drama teacher here at Lorna Weston Schools. Don't trust anyone who invites you for a coffee in the recording studio. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Mr. Amos. Today, we will be talking about drama, performance versus process. Beautiful. Before we dive into the topic, I have yes. a question for you, Ms. Reshmi. Yes. What does drama mean to you? Well, drama to me is something I can use to change myself, to become an entirely new person each time I take on a role. The idea of becoming anyone I want to just simply excites me. It's a chance to take on the challenge of becoming someone completely different. And let me tell you, it is really not easy to stay in character. But I do love the challenge. I also believe that drama promotes communication skills, teamwork and confidence. It also stimulates the imagination and creativity. What does drama mean to you, Mr. Amos? For me, drama started out as a language booster to improve my English language. I was first introduced to performance drama back in secondary school not too long ago. And in drama club, everything was hyperbolic. People would speak and move in weird ways. And it really takes a lot of guts to act foolishly in front of your peers. But... That was also the best way to build confidence for me. Oh, definitely, Miss Ramos. Acting crazy in front of your peers takes a lot of guts. <laughs> definitely not easy. But, Miss Reshmi, can you just tell us what exactly is performance drama? Most definitely. So, performance drama is drama that is meant to be performed for an audience. Actors or students will be put through artist rehearsals, vigorous physical and vocal training to ensure that they put up the greatest show on earth. I'm just kidding. In performance drama, students get the opportunity to showcase to their friends and family or even to the public the fruits of their labour. But why is performance drama good, you might ask? Performance drama encourages teamwork, collaboration one of the key 21st century skill is at the core of a successful performance. Even if the actor is running a one-man show, he still needs to work with the lights and sound crew, the backstage crew and the stage manager. For without perfect chemistry, the entire show will be a huge mess. I know, been there, done that. <laughs> All right, actors also have to work with a script either pre-written or devised. They have to learn and memorize lines after lines. The lines may not always be conventional. For example, Mr. Amos, have you read Roldal's BFG? Yes. Yes, yeah, so you know the giant, right? Mm. Yes, yeah, so the giant speaks with improper grammar. For example, Me is hungry. You is not understanding dreams. So such lines really challenge our young actors to adapt to the conventions of the scripts and memorize them so as to keep the authenticity of the characters. But having said that, the next challenge in performance drama is to take on a role. For actors, understanding the role is not enough. They must learn to live it and breathe the role, Mr. <laughs> Amos. These usually pull the actors out of their comfort zones. So when an actor has to take on an exuberant role, he or she needs to, one, create that character. Two, explore the different ways to express that character. And three, 
sustain that character for a period of time. Do you know how difficult it is, Mr. Amos? I'm sure you do, right? I know it's never easy to play as somebody else for a long period of time. Definitely. And the longest play ever staged was in India, New Delhi, titled Deepika Charesia. Give it a guess, Mr. Amos. How long do you think this play lasted? Mm, four hours? Not even close, Mr. Amos. It ran for a total of 30 hours and 33 minutes. My, my. What? Yes, I know. Imagine having not to be yourself for that amount of time. <laughs> I would forget who I was. I know. Me too. So actors will need to remember blocking and choreography. But what is blocking? Blocking is a jargon for theatre. It refers to the positions actors are being placed on stage. For a play to run smoothly, all actors must be clear about where they and their co-actors are standing on stage. They must always be mindful not to block any actors from the audience's line of sight unintentionally. All these details have to be seamlessly managed to ensure the play's neutrality and protect the magical veil that keeps the drama alive. Above else all, Performance drama cultivates perseverance. As we mentioned before, it's not easy to put on a show. Many a time during my own rehearsal, I feel like giving up. <laughs> While the audience watch the show for the very first time, the actors have been running the same lines, rehearsing the same choreographies for weeks or even months. Right, Mr. Ramis? Yes, it's a long process. Very. As creative as drama is, Rehearsal sometimes could be mundane. That's when the actress's perseverance is being tested. Do I give up or do I stay and work with my cast and crew to put up that fantastic show that I've been working on for months? Performance drama has really taught me the importance of never giving up. Now, now that I've given you some things about performance drama, can you tell us, Mr. Amos, what exactly is process drama? Process drama, unlike performance drama, is not meant to be performed. Mm. Process drama is a teaching and learning tool for educators and our learners. It is a method of teaching and learning drama where the students and teachers work in and out of a role. As a teaching tool, the teacher does not instruct the students on how to act or what to say, but rather the students are engaged in learning through imagination. Oh, how lovely. Now, how is process drama effective as a learning tool? Process drama helps the students learn through physically acting out the scenes instead of reading it on paper. It helps set the students in motion, step into one's shoes, and experience what that character is going through. One way this can be achieved is through teacher in role. A key element in our drama curriculum. Teacher in role is an empowering approach to teaching educational drama developed by Dorothy Heathcote. I am a fan of this method because of its effectiveness and versatility. Oh, me too, Mr. Amos. I absolutely love it each time I step into the role. Teachers spare no expense at creating a convincing character to present to our students in class. Now, in process drama, the students do not work with a script. They are challenged to think on the spot and interact with the different characters that the teachers portray. Through this method, the students learn how to improvise, to make use of their knowledge and surrounding to create a scene with the teacher. Of course, the students are not let to think on their own entirely. Teachers would introduce the relevant topics before they begin the role play. And during the role play, the students take on a different role to complement the drama. Here, the students will apply the knowledge and skills learned in class to propel the plot of the story. This is where teacher and role becomes effective and versatile. 
Teacher and role is effective for learning when the students begin to experience the emotions of various characters in the role play. For example, in the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, the students are made to think badly of the giant. However, if you give the students the opportunity to become the giant in the story, they learn that the giant was being taken advantage of by Jack. Oh, definitely. They would feel the sadness and anger the giant feels when Jack stole his valuables. This would give the students a creative perspective of various stories that they've come to know. For example, is the big bad wolf really all that bad? Or did he just want to be friends with the three little pigs? Maybe he does not know how to make friends. Maybe he does not know how to express himself. All these out-of-the-box perspectives can be easily explored in role play. Now, teacher and role is also a very versatile tool. Teachers teaching learners of all ages can easily utilize this wonderful tool in their lesson. Now, Ms. Rashmi, what is the youngest age group that you teach? Three-year-olds. And has this been effective for you? Oh, most definitely. You must hear the lines that they come up with during the teacher in role drama land. Oh, it's just absolutely amazing. Sometimes they surprise me with the things that they can come up with. Yes. For the preschoolers, teacher in role can help build confidence for the children when they're talking to other people. Seeing their favorite fairy tale come to life would not only excite them, but also help build on their communication skills when they interact with these characters. For the older years, Teacher and role can gradually become a student and role, where the teacher facilitates and the students create their own dramatic stories. It encourages the students to think creatively and to transform a common story into their very own narrative. Now, parents may ask, how can we do this at home? To be honest, costumes and props are a bonus. All you need is a storybook, and some space at home. Miss Rashmi, would you pick a story for me? Any book. How about Little Red Riding Hood? Ah, one of the many classics. Now, parents, all you need is a copy of a Red Riding Hood book, or you can get an electronic copy of your iPad, and you begin reading the book. Remember, at any given opportunity, have your child act out some of the scenes. The book starts with, Mommy asked Little Red Riding Hood to bring some cookies to Grandma's house. Before we set off, Miss Rashmi, how can we start this journey with our children? We can have the children describe how she or he are feeling and how they prepare to go out. What should they bring? Maybe a basket or should they bring some water in case they get thirsty along the way? Should we bring an umbrella in case it rains? All these questions will help a child to start thinking critically. How should we go to Grandma's house? It's in the woods. Should we draw a map? And at this point, you can transform your home into the deep, dark woods. Let your child walk around the house and imagine his very own drama space. And don't be surprised if he starts telling you, Mommy, Daddy, I hear some crickets and birds tweeting. <laughs> and continue the story with the book. Red Riding Hood meets the wolf. What will she say? What will she do? Instead of reading the text, let your child create his or her own story. Just guide your child along the story plot. And there you have it. Process drama right at home. Drama makes learning relatable because students are allowed the freedom to understand what is being taught. The students engage in a role or character and they participate on a personal level, which gives them a sense of responsibility in their learning. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much for, for joining, joining us today. today. I hope you enjoyed it. Just as much as we've enjoyed hosting it. Do send us any questions you might have or share with us an interesting experience you have had with drama. We, we would, would love, love to, to hear, hear about, about it. it. Join us for our next podcast, where Mr. Brandon will be sharing with us on benefits of engaging in nature. Have, Have a, a lovely, lovely week, everyone!